everybody. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to change the world one brave word at a time around here. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the powerful, amazing authors of a new book we have coming out called Unstoppable, Being Fierce, Fearless, and Unfuckwithable in Life and Business. And oh yeah, I just said the F word. This is gonna be a book that will shake you up and make you think twice about the things getting in your way of your life and your dreams. Um, before we introduce you to the amazing women that I have here today, I want to say a huge thank you to Rochelle Marie Lawson, our lead author. Rochelle, you have gathered a stellar author cast here. You are an amazing, powerful woman, and we would not be here without you. So thank you so much for your leadership in this project. Ladies, welcome. How's it going? Thank you. Oh, thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you all. Um, for our viewers, I have Mylene Elke with us. She is the go-to shamanic channeler for writers, spiritual creatives, and enlightened entrepreneurs to experience magical moments and to reveal the beauty in all things. We also have Dr. Pamela J. Pine. She's been a health development and communication professional throughout her adult life, concentrating on enhancing the lives of the poor and otherwise underserved groups and has been an artist as well throughout her life. Kimley Naylor is the founder of Positive Sisters, an organization that empowers women to know their value, worth, and become powerful agents of change. I also have JC Gardner with us. She's an author, writing coach, ghostwriter, and speaker who loves helping new authors bring their visions to life along with helping women reclaim their destiny. Y'all ready for the power I have in this little Zoom room today? I hope so. Um, okay, let's see. JC, you are gonna start this party off. Tell us a little bit about this beautiful chapter you wrote. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful. And it's a blessing to be here with all of you today. I am indeed J.C. Gardner, and I wrote chapter eight in the book, um, Slay, It's Owning Your Purpose. And the subtitle is Slay Your Haters and Reclaim Your Destiny. And what that is about as far as owning your purpose is I find that so many people, especially women, we wear so many different hats. We are, we are housewives, we are mothers, we are workers, we are, we've had to become homeschool teachers over the, over the pandemic. We have had to do so many different things um, in our lives. And a lot of times our own purpose, our own destiny, our own, our own pathway in life gets put to the side because we are doing things for other people. We're volunteering, we're helping our friends get to that next level, <clears throat> excuse me, but what we are supposed to be doing actually lays dormant or because someone else told you what you couldn't do or couldn't be and because of that which is what happened to me I actually squandered my gift and did not proceed with following it for decades y'all I'm talking decades. So my chapter is to encourage those who may know that every day y'all waking up knowing you should be doing something else knowing you should be pursuing something else, but something has stopped you. Something has, has kept you from doing it. A hater came into your life and said, you couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't, but you know in your heart that's what you're supposed to be doing. And that is what my chapter is about, showing you how to get past that and actually living and walking and owning your purpose. Oh my gosh, I don't know anyone who wouldn't be nodding their head to that right now. Like, <laughs> I think everybody can resonate, especially mm -hmm. with what caught me, what I felt in my heart was, you know, you kind of admitted to us that you let that paralyze you for a little too long. And we're here to help people really not be stuck for so long. Like, but what I want to say to you about that is I'm sure that you look back at this point and you don't have regrets. You know, you were made into the woman you are by all of the experiences you had. But do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I will say... 
so Laura, I, the only regret that I have, the only regret I have about that whole decade, 30 or so, 30 years of, you know, really living in someone else's prison, really living, letting someone else's mental state come over me and really allowing different voices in my head. It's just that I wish I had more confidence in myself sooner and earlier. But you know, that's something that we all evolved to. What you all see today is a God formation. I was not always this person. I was not always someone who wanted to do public speaking or anything like that. So I actually had to have an evolution of the mind, you know? So that's the only thing I wish I had done it sooner. But as they say, you know, where you are today is where you are supposed to be. Absolutely. So I also okay. believe that too. I've heard that so often from people and, and it's hard not to say that. Like, I wish it would have just happened a little sooner, you know, for, for all of us. You know, there's something I heard about this too, because I hear a lot of people say, well, when I have the courage or when I have the clarity or, you know, then I will have the confidence, you know, when I have the confidence, I will be, no, like you don't have the courage or the confidence or the clarity first you got to take the action without those feelings. And then guess what happens on the other side of it? Yes. Right, JC? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, I can't wait for y'all to read JC's chapter. All right. So um, let's move to you, Kimley. Tell us about your amazing chapter. So I am chapter 17. It's amazing. She's chapter eight and I'm 17. One and seven is eight, <laughs> following the power. And um, my story is called Self-Worth. <clears throat> and it's reclaiming your voice of power so you can build the life of your dreams. And I too had a very similar experience where the first 36 years of my life were defined by the dark color of my skin what black girls cannot do. Um, we didn't see ourselves in the media as black people anyway, but if we did, you had to be very, very fair and light skinned. So you kind of just rule out opportunities. And I found myself just existing with a low sense, of, low sense of self and just going along for the ride. And it wasn't until I was in my late thirties, mid thirties that I decided through a very devastating experience called depression and not knowing what happens next. And I unveiled a new aspect to me. And so I like to say my pain was transformed into purpose. And as a result, the Positive Sisters business, I like to call it the Positive Sisters movement, where we taught women that real women, real beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, ages, and colors. And that that Sisters and Positive Sisters is an acronym of self-improvement, simply takes education, <clears throat> redevelopment, and sincerity. If you're committed to you, you can create you anew. And so that's what's exciting about this book, Unstoppable, because I'm going to share in my chapter how many things happened, but I was unstoppable and was blessed to be transformed into the woman I am today. Uh, thank you for explaining the acronym. I was going to ask you about that in your bio because I read it so quickly and people didn't really catch that it was like the capital S period, you know? Um, yes. So thank you for that. Listen, you just touched on a foundational piece for many people. I'm going to, I was going to say women. So of course it's women, but actually it's all people. And that is the self-worth. And yes. if people step up into their self-worth, there's a life transformation that's waiting for them to happen, right? So, but we make it sound easy sometimes. This is not easy. Do you remember the moment where whatever that voice was, you know, telling you, you're just like talking back to it finally and just saying, nah, I, I got to choose something different. Can you remember a place I, I do. I know exactly when it occurred. <laughs> I was living in Chicago, Illinois, and I just came out of a devastating relationship, which led into much of the depression I experienced. And I remember emphatically telling myself, the next five years of my life will be not, will be unlike anything I've experienced until now. I'm going to determine what the next five years of my life is going to be. And I made a pact with myself. And um, I left Chicago, returned to Detroit, and I was just on an all-out mission. I know people thought I was crazy. 
you know, she was on medication, right? So she might not be thinking right, but I was clear, I was focused, and I knew I had to preserve myself. So my therapy was my preservation. The medication was my preservation because there was this voice inside of me saying, on the other side of this, you are going to be unstoppable. I came back, didn't know anything, enrolled in college, universities, and it just became a miraculous journey after that. But I remember exactly sitting in the, on the side of my bed, I looked in the mirror and I said, the next five years of your life is not going to be this. And that's what I held on to. And my first of scripture was, I looked to the hills for whence cometh my help. And for the next five years that carried me. And here I am. <laughs> 20 plus years later. <laughs> That's, um, that is awesome. A decision, the power of a decision. You, you spoke about something that we had a little chat about in another interview, and that is, um, you know, Kimley is, is showing you guys, she's giving you this beautiful gift of her own awareness that she had. And it's about discerning the voices because there's an inner critic, there's a negativity voice over here. And then there's this intuitional, you know, higher power, intuitional, like I'm going to drive you in the right direction if you just shut up that other voice and listen to me, you know? And it's about <laughs> like discerning between those things that you're hearing all the time. So I love that you heard you know, and you, you talked back to it like that. I have a conversation with mine sometimes too. I'm like, listen, we're not going to go that way anymore. So I appreciate <laughs> you for that. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. We y'all just get ready for these chapters. And thanks to all of you for not only for just saying yes to the project, but you all coach and teach your master teachers. And it's one thing to teach your clients. You do it all day long, but for someone to come along and say, Hey, now I want you to put those in words, put that in words, what you do and get it in the book in a way that the reader can really have an experience. So I'm thanking you for doing that so brilliantly. These readers are really maybe don't realize what a gift they're about to give get mm -hmm. in this um, toolkit that we're giving them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Mylene, tell us about your amazing Hello. chapter. Hey. <laughs> uh, thank you. I've been a stand-up doll as well over and over. And so I wanted a story where I thought, oh, where I'm unstoppable because that's something I was all in life, but I never had a story because it was like step-by-step step, many getting up. And so I've, I found a story where of me evaporated uh, and so I thought oh that is um, a good story and when it's really touching me very very deep right we um, it's hard enough already to live many different facets if you're not an expert just in one uh, thing right and to claim that and to say yes I can do all these different things that's all a part of me and I wanted to show this and show then also what happens when you um, cannot let go, right? When you cannot not do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, what happens independent of uh, what the outside, if it's a person or the environment, uh, it gives you a stepping stone over which you may trip. <laughs> and so I took that story and unfolded that and you know, what I think was so beautiful throughout uh, these uh, chapters, I'm uh, chapter 14, by the way, and the title is one part of you here to stay, yeah, is that then we all had to bring in beautiful tools to, to anchor what we've spoken about, the story we uh, shared, right? It, because it's medicine, our words. Mm -hmm. You said that so beautifully, Laura. It it uh, it does something with us. Just reading us because we uh, can feel the truth. Mm -hmm. And even in me writing that down for the first time, it reawoke uh, so many things, memories, and uh, a recollection of how do I live now um, with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the tool is where I wanted to share what got me up on my feet again, and that there it is there for all of you. You are never alone and uh, you're always supported by uh, human beings, uh, by nature and our whole cosmos. Yes. 
I love that yeah. you're talking about not being alone because what's happened also in the communities of the book projects, it well is just that a community. And um, Mylene, I wonder how your community for you personally has evolved. What has that meant to you? My community over my life, you mean? Yeah, I mean, or, any, any of the ones that have been important to you. Just talk about community in general. Uh, for me, community is where how I found myself. If I there weren't others telling me how they respond to me, how I'm in relationship with them, I would not be here. Because it was always the speaking back or being seen or, or being heard uh, made me reflect and recognize myself. That is why community, I think, is so important. And I always could let myself fall back and I was embraced and I was loved. Mm -hmm. I'm very strong. I can be a long time alone. But then in, here and there, I need then a community. I've lived in different countries and I've always had then a community again, you know, or in, in, in you do different things in life and you have different sports, art, uh, right? Nature, landscape, architecture, healing, doesn't matter, or mom, yeah? And they're there so we can uh, have something to bounce back and we grow out of that. We blossom out of that as well. Yeah, um, I love me too. that. Yeah, of course, right, everybody. Um, I love that for so many reasons. Thank you for commenting on that. I, I, I think when we, um, well, maybe sometime early on, some of us were taught that success meant you were doing it by yourself. And um, I know I followed that for a while. I'm not sure where, where I learned that, but when it flipped for me and I realized that community and collaboration really would expand me in ways I, you know, it, it's a game changer, right? You could change your whole life, change your whole world. Um, yes. Thank you, Mylene. Um, Dr. Pamela J. Pine, tell us about your amazing chapter. I am chapter 12, and the title of my chapter is The Year of Death, Journeying Through Challenge and Loss to Love and Light. And I pulled on uh, various people's lives, uh, people uh, I saw do things in certain ways, react in certain ways, and grow out of those experiences, mm -hmm. as well as my own life, of course, as well. Uh, the, the chapter really is about coming to an understanding of self coming to an understanding of one's boundaries, uh, learning to um, put those boundaries in place and transform oneself to the next, to the next stage of understanding and compassion for oneself and activities that one is going to uh, move forward with in life. This, this is a heavy chapter, honestly. It's, it's pretty intense. Uh, it does involve death. It involves uh, relationships between people, passionate people. And it was, it was a bit of a um, catharsis, I guess I would say, for me. Uh, and... Uh, and it was interesting for me to write. It was interesting for me to almost watch myself writing it. So that, I'll stop there and, and see if you have any questions, Laura. <laughs> well, so thanks for commenting on the writing process. I think that um, that can be, we, we're all at different stages of how we're moving through that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I appreciate your honesty about, you know, the catharsis thing. Was that something you didn't expect? I don't know if I went into it expecting anything except that I thought that I would ultimately understand things in a way that I hadn't before. Uh, let me say also, and I didn't start out this way, and I might have, is, is that I've got over 40 years of working internationally. 
So I've been involved in some really amazing and exquisite experiences literally all over the world. I've worked from Latin America through Oceania. And I've watched the way different people handle different things. And I've also been involved heavily with uh, the community of child sexual abuse survivors. I'm not mm -hmm. to prevent and treat and heal and mitigate mm -hmm. uh, on, that, on that issue. So I've watched people really, really struggle over the past 20 years. I've been involved mm -hmm. internationally and that, that, that is an international organization as well. Um, but the last 20 years have been largely focused on, on folks who are survivors mm -hmm. and watching them struggle with some of the things that they struggle with and often um, um, moving over their, their, the, the areas that are stumbling blocks for them has been very inspirational for me. And so I think some of the ideas around that um, were built into that chapter as well. Oh, yeah, it's no, the getting no over, it's the getting, yeah. It's the getting over, it's the getting beyond. It's the embracing who oneself actually is ultimately. Mm -hmm. Well, you, got, you all know I'm in love with the writing process in terms of it being a healing process. Um, and it always is. I don't care if you've written 10 published books or none, you know, um, it's always a process and it, sometimes it surprises me. That's why I asked you, you know, was it something you expected? Like sometimes it just surprises me that there's a nugget I didn't get to. And finally, when I'm saying it out loud, so, so I say saying it out loud, meaning I published it for the whole world, like whoever's going to read that, right? And it surprises me sometimes, the emotion that still bubbles up or the feelings that come. Um, so, you know, you got, you all get it, like at another level, having been involved in this project. Okay, so I want to come all around to all of you with this next question. And Kim Lee, I'm starting with you for this one, okay? Okay. What does it mean in your, on your personal journey? What does unstoppable even mean to you? I think um, Dr. Pine said it best. We have those moments in our journey where it just seems like we're up against a brick wall or it may be, it may seem like the most devastating experience we've ever had. And how am I supposed to live? And this has occurred, right? And, um, and you find that essence inside of you. And uh, someone said, God, God formation. There's a transformation that occurs that if you, don't see yourself on the other side of that. The odds of you getting on the other side is probably not going to happen. And I think by seeing that you can get on the other side allows you to go after those resources. What do I need to do to get on the other side of this? Because you make a commitment. I'm going to get on the other side of this. And that commitment becomes an unstoppable force inside of you. And I believe you get introduced to an aspect of your potentiality that you didn't know existed. There was no way for it to be unveiled. And you have this moment, a crisis, a, a, an incident, and you realize if I don't get on the other side of this, my life is gonna be a living hell. And I decided to pursue life. I, pers uh, I decided to pursue joy. And um, there's just a, a essence of you that emerged. I call it your inner essence. We talk about that in my chapter. There's an inner essence that you unveil in yourself. And then it leads you on the other side. You can't get there by yourself. So unstoppable is hearing that voice, being connected to your heart and constantly having a vision of life and what it can be because you've designed it in such a way you choose to experience more than what you're having on your plate right now. I love that, Kimley. Can I say something, Laura? What she got, Pamela? <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I mean, I, I was having a conversation actually with Rochelle yesterday about what, what, makes, what makes women unstoppable. And words that came out of my mouth, it was a surprise question. It was a really interesting question. And what came out of my mouth was that it has to do with passion. Mm -hmm. It has to do with tenacity. It has to do with the, the willingness to build skills 
where mm -hmm. they might not exist mm -hmm. and to push forward uh, under trying circumstances. Yes. Yes. She, she asked me, uh, knowing women all over the world, what, what were the traits that I thought made women unstoppable? Mm -hmm. And they were those, they were the passion, the tenacity, the skill and the resolve. To, mm -hmm. to to go go where you want to go and to see it through. And uh, I think all of these women here, and certainly you, Laura, <laughs> think, you know, are ha, ha, embody, I think, those characteristics. And I think okay. they're so important. And I think yeah. everybody has them in them uh, to embrace. And they're often afraid. You know, somebody else asked me, just one more comment and I'll be quiet. Um, but well, you're asked, answering your order of questions, so no worries. You just go ahead and complete it here. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so somebody, somebody years and years ago, and I said this to Rochelle as well. Somebody years ago had had asked me what I see myself doing in five years, and I and now I'm laughing, but that's what happened. I started just laughing and said, "I have no idea, not not a clue." <laughs> and it was about, it was all, my, my life has never been about climbing the ladder. It has always been about recognizing where my passion lies mm -hmm. and figuring out how to embrace it and hold it and move it forward. And that mm -hmm. has changed. It has changed over the years. And sometimes it'll change literally in six months or a year or what have you, or it, it, it often evolves as well mm -hmm. it changes mm -hmm. even it might be the same texture but i find that it 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 moves to a different place and i love that about my life honestly i would not trade that for anything <laughs> i love it uh pamela i call mine the the joyometer i follow my meter when it's on the high needle side I know when it starts to dip, then I know something's going on. Um, okay, I want to give Mylene a chance to answer this question. Mylene, what does it even mean for you to be unstoppable? Um, I'm always doing what I want, more or less. All my mm -hmm. life, I climbed the fence to go for a walk when my parents were sleeping. I was a toddler. I, I go off the this beaten path, you know, even the woods, then I'm... I'm being pulled by a tree or something who I need to be in a different spot I've I don't know I was always also supported I have two rebels at uh, as uh, parents right is to to be and explore all uh, I love that Pamela said uh, so beautifully the passions so that everything that I discovered within myself and to go and look for it so it's a curiosity that's non-stoppable also, I'm a being, I don't like to be fixed or engaged. Or if you engage me, I can be quiet for a long time. But then if I want to get out, there, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to invent something or find the right person to get me out of it. And uh, because we're beings that are flexible and we've been trained to be inflexible and, and this urge to show that it's possible in different uh, other ways. I think I have done that in many different uh, occasions for myself and for others. The thing that you said that hit me the most just now is, well, two things that, uh, in explore, explore the world kind of mindset, the curiosity. That's the word I heard when you said it. Um, I love that, that you're, you're putting that in your definition of being unstoppable. The curious mindset will help you flip it, the switch anytime right it's about the awareness mm -hmm. anything else you want to say about that Mylene yeah unstoppable is also the freedom to choose whatever you want to do in the moment unstoppable for me also means to stand still for a time sometime or even go backwards or left or right right it is not always this doom where we have to hit with the head through the wall but to to whatever I desire I think this is the most uh, I would say if I look back on my life I love that. Um, okay, JC, what's your version of this? What does it mean to be unstoppable? My goodness, I feel like these ladies have covered every corner and crevice, every nook and cranny of what it means. But the only thing I really would add would be winning. 
like winning in life, winning mm -hmm. at what your desires are, going for it, do it afraid, be bold. Like unstoppable mm -hmm. just means just, you know, finally embracing your destiny, owning your mm -hmm. purpose and just going for it. Yes, you're going to stumble. Yes, you're going to fall. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. But that's part of the journey. That's something I had to learn as well. You know, if you fall down, get back up. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of things that's going to come against you, a lot of obstacles. There's going to be a lot of things in your way, but that's all right, because it's going to make you better and stronger. I signed the $6 million woman and faster, better, stronger, <laughs> faster. I'm dating myself. But that's all right. That's I'm all right, right there with you. You got right for it. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> you know, but you know, that's, you know, part of, and I also really like what Mylene said about, you know, unstoppable doesn't mean you're always moving. I really like that. You know, because that, that, to me, that's when you're in your internal meditative space. Mm -hmm. You're not moving, but you're not moving physically, but you may be moving mentally or your mind may have reset mm -hmm. itself, but it, it's itself, but it doesn't mean um, that you've stopped. You know, it just means that you're resetting, re-engaging, you know, reinvigorating, you know, getting yourself back together again. So I really like, I really like that imagery, but. Um, I feel like everything that I relate and resonate with what all of the ladies said, um, as you called us goddesses, I love that too. <laughs> what all of the goddesses have said uh, before me, I resonate with what they all what they all put forth. I just, you know, that's just my additional um, spin on it. I hey, Laura, it. can I say one thing there? Okay, we're going to move on to take two of this amazing recording, you guys. We had a little technical difficulty, but you know, in the land of Zoom over the last couple of years we've all had, <laughs> I guess it's par for the course. Um, so ladies, thank you for being patient with the tech difficulties today. I want to ask you a really important question. You know, for me, the journey is about awareness and you all are gifting people with your nuggets of awareness. You're, you're so vulnerable in your stories and really offering people a chance to see what goes on in your mind and your heart and your soul. And those gifts of awareness will wake people up to what's possible. Seriously, I, that's how I feel about it. Everything mm -hmm. is awareness. Feeling is healing. And so for me, it's about helping people feel at the next level, right? So um, Mylene, I want to start this with you. What's your awareness practice look like on the day-to-day? -day? Everybody's is a little different, right? What's, what's a piece of your practice? So one awareness practice, I'm already very visual. Yeah, so that's, uh, I see a lot. So that's my awareness. I'm so aware I, my head gets pulled aside if I drive uh, my son to school because suddenly there's a bird sitting in a tree or there is a pheasant on the field. I'm so aware of my surrounding. So I hone that over my life just because what you mentioned, what you notice is the curiosity of how the world functions, how people function, how I function. And what makes me tick, what makes others tick, and what makes the you know sun go around. And this curiosity is my awareness every single uh, day. I'm living in the moment and I'm trying to be aware to be in that moment as well. So it's it's like a like this. You can't separate it out. It's part of me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it's that's a foundational piece of this, right? And how we walk around every day, literally. Mm -hmm. how you know what the practice of that is Mylene thank you um, mm -hmm. everyone you all are going to have a little different skew in terms of the tools or strategies or practices or the way that you literally wake up and do your life right and mm -hmm. in one of the missions behind this question is the same mission behind the book we need all the answers. We need all the voices. We need all the versions of the answer to this question because there are a lot of people in the world and each one of them is going to hear the message in exactly the way only you gals can express it. 
and each one of you in your unique way, right? It's just another thank you that I have to you for coming into the book and offering your voice. It's so important. Um, okay, so Pamela, how about you? What's the awareness practice on the day-to-day -day look like for you? Uh, two things came to mind as you introduced this idea. One was my hot tub. <laughs> Yes, it's it's, you know, whatever I'm doing, um, if I'm wrapped up in something and I'm not all of a sudden or over a short period of time, I'm not happy with the way I'm feeling. All of is 104. Getting in there just It was me listen to bodies of me. Um, I watch the sky. I watch the changes in the sky. That's one thing. But the other thing for me that came to mind is for whatever reason, and I'm sure there are many of them that contribute to, to what I'm about to say or have contributed, is that I'm, I seek intensity. And that's constant. Uh, it doesn't have to look or feel from the outside intense. It might be that I'm just really steeped in sitting and looking at the sun and the trees and hearing the birds. Uh, but uh, there is an aspect of me that is consistently and constantly seeking that. So if I'm involved with writing, if, if I'm painting, if I'm singing, there is always that goal that's inside my head that's looking for that total immersion. And I find that total immersion very satisfying. Mm -hmm. So it's those two, th that's what came to mind, those two things for me. One is a complete relaxing situation. And the other one is putting myself, uh, creating situations that, that feel completely immersive to me. And maybe the hot tub's the same thing. I like to be immersed. I think you and it do keeps... both with the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, you could, right. That's right, absolutely. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's how I've lived, I would say, probably for the last 44 years um, with a focus on that, no matter what it is I've been involved with. Awesome, thank you. JC, how about you? What's the practice look like for you? Well, a lot of people take showers to be clean, but showers are actually my prayer closet. Every morning, I'm grateful, but in that shower, is I'm telling you, that's like my grounding moment. Similar to Pamela and the water, it has to, I think it has to do with the water and the cleansing and all of the sim symbolism of just being in that water. But that's also when I really get grounded for the day and really understand my awareness. I get so many downloads in the shower. It's really my one-on-one -on -one time with the creator where we really become on one accord. So that's one thing where I really become aware of how am I feeling today? What are we going to do today? And really get myself situated for the rest of the day. Um, the other two things is actually being aware of when I'm in negative energy. I do not do well. So if I'm in a situation, try to find humor in it, try to like, you know, navigate that because I'm in, a, I know I'm aware. And if I see that I can't change it, then I quickly try to exit. <laughs> So it's like being, being aware that this, wherever I'm at now, is not going to be conducive to my spirit. It's not going to help me. Let me just get through it and then exit out. Um, and then the last thing is expecting change. I've learned to just expect change. And if I expect change and no change happens during that day, it's party time. But then <laughs> if change does happen, then I can be like, okay, well, I knew something was going to happen. I knew that this was possibility and it just allows me to manage it and navigate it better. So there, that's just three ways that I'm like aware of who I am 
and how I, I function. And I just want to say one last thing really quick. I believe there's life in everything. I just do. I believe there's life in inanimate things. I know that's weird. But I just believe if we talk to our situations, circumstances, even what these things that we, things, like things, trees, birds, all that, you know, my computer, you better behave today. Mm. I believe that also gives me an awareness of, you know, just the way that I navigate life. <laughs> I did not talk to my computer like that this morning, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> I needed to do that. I, lo I love all of those. Oh my gosh, for so many reasons, I love all of those. Um, okay, so ladies, um, we're going to do a little speed dating version of this last question, okay? So a couple of sentences, see if you can really sum it up for me. But we have our viewers and, you know, they get it and they're listening and they're getting some such powerful nuggets today from all of you. But we've been through a lot this, these last couple of years, maybe they're still mm -hmm. a little stuck and they need an easy entry point today, a simple stepping stone. So Pamela, What's yours for our viewer? It's okay. It's, it's those words. You're okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. And to accept the place where you're sitting right now, feel it, hold on to it, and then decide where you want to change it to. We have a tendency to judge where we're sitting. And I think accepting where we're sitting gets us a lot further. Mm -hmm. I love it, thank you. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, oh my gosh, there's so much to think about in every one of your answers to every question we've had today. You all know we could talk for hours on any one of these juicy questions, right? Um, I'm feeling into um, Pamela's right now. Okay, so JC, you're up next on this one. That person might just be a little stuck still and they just need an easy way to hop on the journey today. Believe, have faith and believe that you can do it, that you have the ability to change your circumstances, regardless of what anybody has told you, said to you, or done to you in the past. It's difficult, but it's doable. Just get into the right circle, right sisterhood, right brotherhood even. Just make sure you have someone. It only needs one person to have your back. <clears throat> and that's all you have to do is take one baby step out of wherever you are now to get to that better place of living. Mm. Yes, I love it. Thank you. That's awesome. Mm. Okay, Kimley, you're up next. What do you think? I'm just offering that easy entry point. I think one of the greatest gifts you can do is just read to visit. What do I desire to do? Get close with your own desires and what I want to create out of this. I'm not gonna judge what happened up until now it's like a white canvas. What would I have desired to put on this canvas now? I've had this two year reprieve. I've had a chance to you know, reevaluate what I want, what I wanna do, how I wanna show up in the world. And uh, most importantly, just get you some good music. Get you some good music, dance, dance, dance. It's some magic in dance and don't ask me what it is, <laughs> but I got the gift of dance and I love to use it. So dance and desires will get you where you want to go next. <laughs> I love that one. Thank you for that. That is awesome. And in, in multiple ways, we could combine these, you know, <laughs> like you could turn on the music and begin your dance and then repeat the mantra. It's going to be OK. Like I'm going to combine all of yours together. We'll make one big thing. <laughs> in the hot tub. Now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, it's, seat, it's seat six. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Mylene, 
you're really going to wrap us up today on this last question. So that person is listening and they might still just be a little bit stuck. What's your way to kind of ease them in with us here? Yeah, to know it's the reason why we're all now living on this earth. Yeah, so your light is important. You are important to be here right now and that celebrate just that. Nice. Um, oh, what a perfect, easy, simple way to wrap this up. Um, mm -hmm. All right, everyone here, honestly, authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today thank to you. share it with yeah. everybody. Um, you're amazing badasses, all of you. And this book is going to be such a gift to the world. Listeners, please remember, we have this book coming out on Amazon <clears throat> in February. And we've got a book launch party live stream that you can join us for on the 16th of February at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. So we're going to hook you up down below in the show notes with all of that information, including all of our authors information so if one of them said something amazing and you were just sitting up a little straighter listening into what they had to say drop on down click on their website explore take the next step with them find out more about them they are amazing human beings and they are very generously there to answer your questions and give you support and connect with you and maybe you need to build that community while you are staring at some of the amazing people who will do that for you. So um, lastly today, you all remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. Mm -hmm. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.